Welcome back everyone to the official Quantum Resistant Ledger channel, your video portal in the Pulse Quantum digital asset security. So, since the successful launch of QRL 2.0, we've been talking a lot about multi-sig, ephemeral messaging, random X, proof of work, proof of stake, XYZ element OP, etc, etc. We focused a lot on new material, new features, walkthroughs, and other really great things that are happening with this project. I was giving this some thought, and I think it makes sense to take a technical material breather and circle back a little bit to who we are, what we're doing, so that newcomers to the project uh, can get caught up to speed. So, if you're new to the QRL, you want to know what it is, you want to know what we do and why we do it, this video is written just for you. Um, it wouldn't be a good start without first talking about the team behind the project. So, a little summary on that. Uh, we're made up of a bunch of forward-thinking technology enthusiasts across the world of varying professional technical backgrounds and disciplines. Um, despite any difference in, in areas of expertise, one thing in common is that we're all quantum computer optimists that believe we are witnessing one of the greatest, most technological revolutions since the television, the personal computer, the, the internet, the smartphone um, pick. If you aren't familiar with what quantum computing is, there's a lot of information and equally as much misinformation online about it. YouTube's a good place to start. So in the near future, quantum computers will play the role of a bit of a double agent, having the ability to both strengthen some industries and disrupt others. It's fairly well accepted that quantum computers have use cases in molecular simulation, which can lead to new drug discoveries, scenario simulations, such as evaluating risk, pricing, um, things that might be beneficial to financial markets, uh, optimization advantages, such as supply chain management and uh, logistics. Um, and there's some fringe use cases that people talk about in uh, respective to artificial intelligence. And of course, there's a little thing called factorization, which leads us into the next topic. So the 1970s brought us a lot of interesting things that helped define the decade. Star Wars, Pong, Saturday Night Live, and the movie Jaws. One thing in particular that stood the test of time, okay, Star Wars has stood the test of time as well, um, is something known as asymmetric cryptography, which today is as important as the internal combustion or electric lighting, but as invisible to society, yet equally as indispensable as, for example, radio waves. Starting in the 1970s, all modern public-private key cryptography, the kind that secures your credit card on the web, secures your smartphone, encrypts your bank transactions, and almost certainly all of the cryptocurrencies in your portfolio rely on something called factorization to encrypt it. Factorization, simply put, is breaking down a number into smaller numbers that when multiplied together give you that original number. For example, multiplying 4,289 with 3,559 is easy to do and will give you a result of 15,264,551. But doing this in reverse order is much more difficult. Now suppose you want to find the two prime numbers that when multiplied together equal the very large number. As this number increases, this becomes exponentially more difficult as there is no classical way to efficiently solve this problem. And therefore, this became the basis of all modern public private key uh, cryptography, including Bitcoin. So enter the quantum computer. Instead of approaching the problem by brute force, forcing your way through on a classical computer with a sledgehammer, quantum computers have the ability to use nature itself in a strange world of subatomic phenomena to try multiple combinations to get the solution all at the same time. This simple advantage is what makes the technology so disruptive. So at the time of this article, there are two commercial quantum computers available, one by IBM and one by D-Wave. These can be purchased and are being purchased by large organizations. So how do quantum computers resolve this factorization issue? In 1994, Peter Shore of AT&T Bell Labs in New Jersey discovered an algorithm that allows for polynomial time integer factorization. This means that a sufficiently powerful quantum computer would be able to theoretically calculate a private key from a public key allowing effortless decryption of whatever was secured by that private key. In the case of Bitcoin, 
This would translate to access to the complete wallet. Um, this also applies to almost all other altcoins in the marketplace today. This algorithm became known as Shor's algorithm and for a while remained a curiosity in the back of cryptographers everywhere. But fast forward in 2020, while Shor's isn't the only algorithm available to solve this problem, it is the most well known. Over time, the question of quantum computing using Shor algorithms or one of its variants will become cryptographically disruptive has evolved from being just theoretical to possible to demonstrable. So where does the QRL Foundation fit into all of this? First off, we believe that blockchain is a technology that's here to stay. It's already disrupting industries across the world, um, replacing centralized organizations, often with high overhead man hours and processes with computer algorithms. Um, progress in the field of quantum computers is accelerating. A quick comparison between Moore's Law and the proposed Nevin's Law might give a little bit of context here. Um, some of technology's greatest leaders have two things in common. Pioneering solutions to problems that people aren't quite aware of yet by connecting the dots and inspiring innovation by leading by example. This is why the team at QRL created the first industrial grade, Pulse Quantum Secure, NAST Draft Recommended, Open Source, third party audited cryptocurrency. Second, we're building an entire ecosystem on top of our blockchain like with projects like Enclave, which will allow the ability to Pulse Quantum secure other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum. We've built an ephemeral messaging uh, stub layer which uses lattice transactions which will allow third parties to build Pulse Quantum secure communication applications on top of the blockchain as well. We've added multi-signature wallet support, which can improve custody issues, meaning that a voting mechanism controls the wallet, which can be owned by more than one person, referred to as a signatory. We also implemented support for the ledger series of hardware wallets so that your private key can be stored as securely as possible. And at the time of this YouTube video, we are the most profitable coin to be mined with a general purpose CPU, uh, just slightly above a Mon uh, Monero. Okay, so a rich set of features, check. Uh, third party audited, provably secure, industrial grade protection, um, open source, that's current tech and future tech secure, check. But what about the quantum threat? How real is this risk? Are we actually talking about a real existential threat? And if so, why haven't I heard much about it? In the next video, I'm gonna go over and build a case for why the future is quantum, the threat to modern encryption and why QRL provides the ultimate hedge against those looking to secure their digital assets against technology progresses. Thank you very much.